Good day, everyone, and welcome to St. Anthony Catholic Church. Today is Wednesday, May 12th, of the sixth week of Easter. This Mass is being offered for Michelle Gilliam, and we are also observing the memorial of two saints, Nereus and Achilles, martyrs. Two first century martyrs are honored today, Nereus and Achilles, both soldiers who gave up their military careers upon becoming Christians. They were then condemned to death. One tradition says by beheading, another by being burned to death. We honor them for their courage in dying to profess their faith in Christ. They were buried in a cemetery on the Ardentine Way where a basilica was built in their honor. In the fourth century, Pope Saint Damasca, Damascus wrote an epitaph for their tombstone at their place of burial. It reads, the martyrs Nereus and Achilles had enrolled themselves in the army and exercised the cruel office of carrying out orders of the tyrant, being ever ready through the constraint of fear to obey his will. O miracle of faith, suddenly they cease from their fury. They became converted. They fly from the camp of their wicked leader. They throw away their shields, their armor, and their blood-stained javelins. Confessing the faith of Christ, they rejoice to bear testimony to its triumph. Learn now from the words of Damascus, Damascus what great things the glory of Christ can accomplish. Cardinal John Henry Newman wrote, No one is a martyr for a conclusion. No one is a martyr for an opinion. It is faith that makes martyrs. Please join us in our opening song, Baptized in Water, number 640. where we have not worshipped the true God who gave us life, his mercy, and love. For these times, let us ask the Lord for his heart and mercy. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you call us to new life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, by your death and resurrection, you led us to the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who know the great courage of the martyr Nereus and Achilles in confessing you may experience their loving intercession for us in your presence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul's escorts take, had taken him to Athens, they came away with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. 
Then Paul stood up at the Areopagus and said, You Athenians, I see that in every respect you are very religious. For as I walked around looking carefully at your shrines, I even discovered an altar inscribed to an unknown God. What therefore you unknowingly worship, I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and all that is in it, the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in sanctuaries made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands because he needs anything. Rather, it is he who gives to everyone life and breath and everything. He made from one the whole human race to dwell on the entire surface of the earth. And he fixed the ordered seasons and the boundaries of their regions so that people might seek God, even perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since therefore we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divinity is like an image fashioned from gold, silver, or stone by human art and imagination. God has overlooked the times of ignorance, but now he demands that all people everywhere repent because he has established a day on which he will judge the world with justice through a man he has appointed, and he has provided confirmation for all by raising him from the dead. When they heard about resurrection of the dead, some began to scoff, but others said, we should like to hear you on this some other time. And so Paul left them, but some did join him and became believers. Among them were Dionysus, a member of the court of the Areopagus, a woman named Damaris, and others with him. After this, he left Athens and went to Corinth. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you his angels. Praise him, all you his hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Let the kings of the earth and all peoples, the princes and all the judges of the earth, young men too, and maidens, old men, and boys. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. He has lifted up the horn of his people. Be this his praise from all his faithful ones, from the children of Israel, the people close to him. Alleluia. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Alleluia. Alleluia. For this reason, I have told you 
that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. We hear to, from today's first reading, Paul visited Athens, and he saw many temples, many temples, temples for different gods. There's even one for the God of unknown. What does that tell you about those people who live in Athens at a time? They weren't certain where their help would come from. Excuse me? They were not certain where their help would come from. Okay, yes, they're not certain where their help would come from. If they wanted, obviously their hearts are troubled. Yeah. They wanted some security, just in case we miss anybody. For the, any God, we will build this temple for the God of unknown. Oops, sorry. This God, we don't know who you are, but we want to give you praise anyway. And of course, all the other gods that they know, they know or believe in, they've created a temple for them. I wonder, are things really that different today? Do we have different temples that we, we as a society yes. worship in? Yes. What are they? Fame. Yes, don't we have a temple of fame? That we think that somehow we worship this God will be happy. Any other temple? Wealth. Yes, wealth definitely. Anything else? Appearance. Yes, beauty. That's an important yeah. temple. Or the temple of health that people sometimes spend, well, many, many hours of their life worry about their health. Anything else? Beauty. Yes, beauty is important. Or the temple of youth. We are, we are so afraid of growing old that we try to be young as possible and sometimes the, the results are not quite up to what we thought it would be. When we end up looking kind of silly or a tragedy happens, you can only have so much Botox or many for surgical procedure. Sometimes they don't turn out too well, as we have seen for people. Anything else? Being prideful and egotistic. Okay, those are te yes, the temple, and and ultimately, do those gods we worship bring us joy and happiness? No. Why not? Because they're not gods. Because they're not God. Ultimately, they will fail you at some point. Think about beauty, wealth, and riches. Guess what? It all goes away. It all goes away. How does it go away? When you die, you don't. Yes, when you die, and think about when you get older, try to fight against gravity. How does that work out? Or, or being young and healthy, vigorous all the time, guess what? You can't fight against time, because ultimately, the body is susceptible to, you know, to getting older. Your memory, even intellect sometimes, don't we worship that? Over time, as you grow older, do we have control of Alzheimer's, dementia? We do, even if we have all the money in the world. No, no because it, when it's, we still, there's so many things we don't understand, you understand, that could take away our intellect and things we thought of great importance in our life, things that would bring us happiness. Does it bring us happiness? And eventually they will fail us. And today, Paul says, where is the true temple? Is it made with the human hands of silver, gold, or any other precious metal? No. 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 Where is the true temple? In your heart. In your heart, true, the true God. Because whose image are you made of? God. In God's image. That should be something very precious. And oftentimes, you know, we lose sight of that. And what happens when we lose sight of that in our life? That we try to create all these artificial, all these fake temples, trying to make give us meaning in our life. Our life gets confused. It lets get confused. We end up find out somehow afterward. Our life is so shallow; it has no meaning. And sometimes, you know, we even when we fail to recognize Christ among us, Christ in our community, in one another, what happens to our relationship when we fail to recognize the sacredness of a human life? We are just another person. It's just a means to an end to us. Don't we sometimes see each other as a means to an end? And don't sometimes you guys, when you guys go to the store 
or a, a business, you know, when you deal with a, a store or go to a store to buy something, what is a typical experience? Oftentimes it's just, you know, what can we basically, here's your, here's your thing, here's your item, you pay for it and then you're gone. Nobody ever really, sometimes you fail to recognize each other. And sometimes, you know, we forget that. As a result, our life feels so empty because God has given us a precious gift in our relationship, in one another. And sometimes, we're, we, when we fail to realize that, we fail to recognize, even within ourselves, that God's great gift resides here, that He lives with us in the mystery of the Eucharist to help us, to sustain us in our life. And when we fail to do that, no wonder we're so, we find our, ourselves so confused, so worn down. Sometimes our life is of little value. And God, Paul reminds us today that your life is precious because you, in you is the living Christ, is the living flesh of the body of Christ. And that's the reason Christ died for us so that we may have new life. And ultimately, his glory resides within us if we choose to live out His love in our life. The problem is sometimes when we fail to do that. Because I know when I see in your life the love that you share to one another, it's a beautiful, amazing experience when people are so true to each other over the course of many, many years, many, you know, longer than I've lived, than I think I live a few years, but you know, to see that, it's just an amazing experience, you know, to know that, to see that, yeah, this person can, ex can have such a, a wonderful relationship. Sure, they have problems, but when they've gone through it together for so long, it's a beautiful experience. And when people, I don't know about you, but when I see pe couples that really love each other and spend, enjoy spending time together, they like enjoy going everywhere together. I'm talking, I'm thinking, boy, sometimes people will often say, this is like an old after a while. Don't you guys get, guys get tired of each other? Well, do you guys get tired of each other? No, obviously not. They're still together all the time. But I mean, that tells you something. And what's the secret? Does, how come you guys don't get tired of each other? Shirley? Well, I respect him and I love him and um, I just like to be with him. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a, it's a natural thing. Sometimes I, I spend time laying down reading from, from books and um, uh, I miss him even though he just may be outside or he may be in the next room watching television, but I miss him because I can't get up at that time and be with him. Right. And that's a beautiful thing. And you've been married how many years now? Almost 64. Almost 64. Two more months. Yes, two more months. <laughs> but I mean, that tells you something about, about love in life. That no matter how old we are, how long we've been together, if you can see the sacredness of that person, that this person, God chose for me and I accept it and I'm grateful that this person makes my life rich. Because imagine if, if even if we have everything that we, that this world could give us, wealth, fame, beauty, how many people have you known who have all that, but they are still unhappy in their life, who is so still, who feels so empty? Yeah, who's still seeking all the time and so discontent. And yet that many of our young people or even older people, they often seek on that. And when they, they achieve some of that, they still feel so empty. That should tell us something in our life. And so today, my brothers and sisters, I just invite you to look in your own life. The riches of God's glory is around you. Perhaps even in, in your life, we have to open our eyes to it and work on those relationships because those appreciation, does it come automatically? No, sometimes it takes a lot of work, forgiveness, grief, 
up and down in relationship to, to, for us to recognize. And oftentimes, unfortunately, we don't recognize it until it's gone. And by that time, guess what? A little too little too late. So I just invite you, my brothers and sisters, not to lose the moment of God's gift to each, to each and every one of you. That this day and all the days of your life, you may recognize God's goodness and God's love for you in your life. Amen. Trusting in God's goodness and love, let us turn to now for our needs and all the needs of the world. For Pope Francis, for Alexander, our bishop, and all our priests, bishops, and deacons, may God's grace be upon them to be an example of holiness for their people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each and every one of us, may our love for one another grow each and every day. That in doing so, may we, we be an example of your love for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also pray for all the prayers, the concern, the words that lie deep within our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also pray for all our brothers and sisters who have gone before us, trusting and believing God's love and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and compassionate Father, accept the prayers of your family gathered here. Help each and every one of us, O oh Lord, to turn to you, that in doing so, may we experience your love and your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A song for the preparation of gifts in peace and joy of our desiring, number 409. Always and everywhere to give you thanks 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty Eternal God, be Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer a sure sign of your love, that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage, their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church. Spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit the co-heir to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him. O oh God, Almighty oh Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and for the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, 
peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other's hands. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. For have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. For have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my work, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. To the victor, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in paradise, O oh my God. Hallelujah. Act of spiritual communion. Jesus, thank you for coming into our hearts. We welcome you and unite ourselves to you. Strengthen us in your love as we await the day we are reunited at the Eucharistic table. Amen. In song is in 343, Spirit and Grace.
Lord, so that your, in your kindness, your saints may be take, may be show forth the glory of this Paschal sacrament. May and and always show forth your mercy and love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Remember, if uh, to pick up your latest word among us and the latest Catholic Sentinel issue. We have the newest, uh, latest Catholic issue we just put out this weekend. So be sure to come by the church to pick it up. And also my Asian market. Remember, if you have extra flower vases, especially those that goes into pear, I just realized today that boy, most of us don't have it in pear that I know of. Most of us have like, just one. But anyway, if anything you can spare, that would be great. To uh, yes, we got a beautiful base already. Someone donated already. It's a nice base. So if you got some extra light around the house, we would uh, love to have them to decorate the church with. Also, remember uh, one of the great way, one of the great give God's gift to us to show His mercy and love is to the sacrament of marriage. And marriage is a beautiful, beautiful thing in our life. It changes us. It's renews us. It's also a great witness to us. What greater gift it is than it is to love and to be loved your entire lifetime. And I think that's a great beautiful thing that we should celebrate together as a community. So I just invite you for those who have upcoming wedding anniversary, email us your wedding picture and the present day picture and a poignant memory of something about special about that day. Let us celebrate together God's goodness and love for one another. So I just invite you to do so. Also, remember, oh, that means, yes, you guys got a wedding anniversary in two months, Shirley and Jim, 64 years, be sure to send yours in. Yes, September. Yes, so, keep it, so be sure to do that soon. Yes. And it's wonderful, isn't it, Jim, to be missed by somebody, even though you're in another room. That's a beautiful thing. Yes. Also, remember also, uh, we all have a story to tell about God's glory in our life. How God has touched us through a difficult, trying time. Guess what? Does everyone have a trying, difficult time in their lifetime? Yes. 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 Even if you're super wealthy and famous? Yes. Oh, yes. yes, probably even more so. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, God is there all around us. Sometimes we fail to see that. And sometimes it's wonderful when we hear another person that we know who's gone through that. So I just invite you and encourage you because in sharing it, I think the beautiful thing in sharing it, the story doesn't die with us. Someday when we leave this world, hey, it's out there. If it can help somebody, that's a great thing. So I just invite you to do so. Send in your story to Pam with, a per with a, your picture and maybe a little bio about yourself. Once a few sentences, tell us who you are and your story. It's a great witness for others. And if you don't, if you're not writing, it's not very difficult for you. We have Lisa Hoffman who volunteered to hear your story and um, put it in written form for us. So I just invite you to consider doing that. Also, for those who'd like to go to confession, please email me. My email address is up, is in our it's on our web page. Also, mass intention, please email or mail me your request to the office. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Say, Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our closing song is number 482, Love Has Come.